Hi all. In today's class, we are going to discuss on supply chain planning using SAP Integrated Business Planning. The agenda for today's call will be the real world supply chain business scenario. Then we are going to discuss on the supply chain management. Then it will be the integrated business planning approach, and at the end we'll look into the SAP Integrated Business Planning. So, to begin with. Let's consider a real-world supply chain business scenario. It's a hypothetical scenario. Let's assume a company called Cold Drinks exists, okay? who manufacture the cold drinks, the aerated fizzy drinks. They manufacture in different flavors: cola, orange, lemonades, all those things they manufacture. So their core process is manufacturing the cold drinks. They'll have the formula, the chemicals, whatever is needed to manufacture. Now they might be needing something in addition to this cold drink, which would be the container or the bottles. They might need the cap. They might need the labels to show their brand. So for these things, in most of the cases, the company would be using, will be approaching the vendors, or, or it will outsource all these things. Okay. So they are going to buy the bottles, labels, all those stuff from the suppliers or the vendors. What else they do? They have whatever they have manufactured. They are going to sell it to the customers. In this case, let's take the example that they are going to sell it to the supermarkets. Okay. So with this example, I'll take the session forward. So let's take a look into what are all the challenges that this company can face in the real world. So first, they should know. I have mentioned the point that they are going, they are manufacturing company and they are going to manufacture some products there. So how much to manufacture? How will they know that? Then, what is required to manufacture the product? What are all the ingredients? Say in the previous example that we see now, just now, over there we need the aerated drinks. We need the bottle in the stock. We need the labels, caps. Everything should be in the stock in the company. Okay, these are the things that are essential for the manufacturing. So we we'll first check what we have in our stocks and what do we need. Say we have need to manufacture some 500 bottles of this particular cold drink. So we'll check first how many of them are available. Okay, let's say that I have 100 manufactured bottles already with me. Check and sell to the customers. Then 400 I need to manufacture again. For this 400, I need 400 bottles, I need 400 caps, I need 400 labels. So I'll again make the check that how much am I going to buy from the vendors. Say I have 50 caps, so I need to buy 350 caps again. So these things need to be considered. And which customer will tell the, sell the products? Okay, so there might be different number of customers. Some might be the high priority customers for whom stocks are to be mandatorily be sent every month. So such customers will also be taken into account. Now, the other two questions which I have written or the questions or the challenges what mainly comes is that what will happen if I manufacture more than required? What will happen if I manufacture less than what is required? Say the market needs 100 bottles of our fizzy drinks of cola. Okay. So, what if I manufacture 800 the customer will buy only the 500 which they need the 300 will be the waste of the money okay it's a cost for the company company will put the cost for the products that is manufacturing and it will go as a waste so what will happen if I manufacture less say I need 500 but I am manufacturing only 200 batteries. so what will happen in this case in this case, the customer is not satisfied. There are very good chances that the customer will move to some other uh, vendor or supplier. You are basically the supplier to the customer. The way the cap manufacturers or the bottle manufacturers are the suppliers to you, you are the supplier and there is the customer. So, organization needs to make the decisions to all these questions. Okay, the, all these challenges they have to address. So, before seeing how they can address it, let's go to the concept known as supply chain management. So what is supply chain management? Basically, supply chain management 
is the process in which a product is made available for a customer from a particular location at the right time okay basically we are making a customer the product being available for them okay this consists of two process one is supply chain planning the other one is supply chain execution what is included in the plan so we are saying okay for the next month this particular customer okay the supermarket in new delhi okay they need around 500 bottles of cola drink so i have to reserve those for them whether the customer is going to actually buy that is a different question okay this is just a forecasting or a prediction the demand how much we need so then the supply chain execution the execution part consists of the purchase production and the sales in the previous example which i told the company needs around 500 bottles of the cola drink to be manufactured and they have 100 stock with them so they are going to make 400 of them 400 quantities of the cola drink they are going to manufacture for this they need to buy the bottle they need to buy the cap they need to buy the table sorry i need they need to buy the label okay so then they have to start the production of the concentration by mixing the formulas all those things they have to make start making the drinks and then they are going to sell so basically it comes to purchase production and sales so how will the supply chain be efficient or to be executed it is efficient so for that whenever the planning what we do if it meets the execution in this example say we have planned that 500 quantities of this particular uh, uh drink will be sold and it is the customer does buy the 500 uh, quantity of drink okay so in that case our supply chain plan is successful but most of the cases if we even if we match the planning with our execution it's a very good profit for the company what we have to ensure the business is efficient supply chain plan so now the questions that we discussed is how much to manufacture as i mentioned it is based on the demand or the demand forecast so how to forecast the demand all those part we are going to see going ahead so i will not discuss much on that basically we will get a number okay from the customer say the customer was buying 180 quantities every month so we'll predict that okay this month also he is going to buy 180 this is one of the way of predicting the demand there is sales rep who is meeting the customers at the ground level so he'll have his number he'll say that okay this, we need this much quantity of this particular material this month okay such many factors are there which we are going to discuss next what is required to manufacture the product this is already been discussed the raw materials or whatever it to procure purchase all those things has to be done now what we have and what we need i said to you that for the 500 quantities we have already 100 quantity in stock for cold drink company so we need 400 so this is the supply planning making sure that the demand is met we need to manufacture that for manufacturing we need to buy something from the external vendor that is procured we need to manufacture some that is a cola drink and then we need to use the whatever is there in our stock okay so this is a supply and one more thing which customer to sell the product for this question the answer is the priorities is there any priority customer who should be served first all those questions will come and again i already told you what will happen if i manufacture more or what will happen if i manufacture less okay the more manufacture it's a loss for the company the financial loss and then less if we manufacture the customer satisfaction will go so we have to ensure that the supply meets the demand it doesn't cross it neither does it mean less than that so next integrated business planning approach. now before going to the points which is needed in this slide let's take a let's think of this situation okay say there are demand planners who will say who will meet the customers they have their previous values or the actual data which was present previously based on that they will try to derive a number say that this month okay we are going to manufacture 700 quantities they are not even bothered to consider how much my company can manufacture or supply planning can give me 
okay they are not bothered they'll just see the demand as certain values and that's it process stops there for the demand planning for supply planners what they do is that they are not caring about the demand they will not be bothered about the demand this is just a hypothetical scenario so what they will say is that okay my capacity for this month is 300 i will manufacture only those okay and they are not bothered or not contacting demand so both are separated process what will happen in this time when the next month sales come the demand planner or the sales guy the sales guy will be expecting a quantity of 800 but he has not communicated the same to supply planner supply planner didn't go to ask the demand planner what the demand is but he instead manufactured just 300 so what will happen this time customer will be disappointed there are chances that the customer moves out and demand is very less in a particular month and supply planner prepared more quantities he manufactured more what will happen it's a financial loss for the company so again i am repeating it's the balancing of the demand and supply so this is the main and the core of the integrated business planning. Okay. So what they are going to do is that they are going to integrate both with the same set of data. So whatever comes as a demand only will go to the supply. So the data is in sync in real time. Okay. So these inputs are there. With that, we'll go further for the next slide. So what is SAP integrated business planning? I will not go to the exact definition of this, we will see it in the later part. Before that, let's see what it does. Okay, It brings the supply chain planning process together under one roof. Okay, You can see many terms here, one is called sales and operations planning, the other one is the demand, the other one is the inventory, there is response and supply, then there is supply chain control tower. Okay. So, sales and operations planning is actually one aspect of the supply chain planning process. Okay, there are demand, inventory, response and supply chain control tower as I mentioned. Okay, so it brings everything under one roof. That's why it's called the integrated business planning. So let's look into what the sales and operations planning is. Initially, when IBP started, we didn't have these modules, demand, inventory, response and supply and supply chain control tower. There was only a sales and operations planning. So IBP was called as sales and operations planning initially. Okay, it's a integrated business process to ensure that the customer's demand can be met by the production, distribution, and the purchasing activities of the organization. Basically, what the customer demand comes, am I or will I be able to satisfy that? Will I be able to meet the customer requirements? This is what the sales and planning operation planning does. So, just by the definition, you will come to know. Okay, sales and operations planning has a demand part, it even has a supply part. So why there are again different modules? As you see here, why do we need demand? Why do we need supply here? There are inventory and supply sheet control also. Why do we need that? You can we'll get the answer as well now. Okay, in the class. So there are four different processes in sales and operations planning. We'll look into that first. Then we'll be telling or telling on how or why the other models are needed. So what happens in sales and operation planning is there is a demand review, there is supply review, there is a reconciliation review and there is a management review. So what happens in the demand review? In this, the demand planners or the sales guys, everyone, they will just gather the data from the actuals or the forecast. Forecast can be of different ways. The demand planner will give his forecast, the sales guy will give his forecast, there is a marketing guy who will give his phone values. And then there are forecasting algorithms which generate their own values. So there are many inputs, 5 to 6 or 7, any number of inputs as per your organization or the customization, whatever is there, it will be decided. At the end, we any value, say the sales guy said that 100 is my value and the demand planner says 150. And the marketing guy says no, this time it will be 200. But they'll always come into a single agreed value that will be the final forecast. So, as I said, if the demand and review are not integrated, it will be a big problem where one is not being communicated of the other's requirement. So, 
this value demand value itself is sent to the supply so they are integrated what the supply will do in the supply review supply will run the heuristics and it will constrain the demand based on the capacity say uh, the demand planners everyone agree and come into a consensus number saying that we need 500 so the supply review it will calculate okay what are the quantities is there as i repeated earlier what number of quantities are there how much i need to manufacture what and all i need to buy it will say it will calculate and there are two possibilities one it can meet the demand okay ideal case where it will say that okay i can give you the manufacturing all this stuff in a month basically we are planning the sales and operation cycle in the previous month for the next month it's happening monthly so it will say like that will run the heuristics and constrain the demand based on capacity now you can either meet the demand or the other possibility is that this particular uh, supply plan will say that i can give you only 300 because i don't have enough machines or laborers to take care of that so that is the main concern so then they will talk to them they will have the meetings and then they will agree whether to go for just 300 or can anything be done do we need to purchase new machines and make the quantity more how important is the demand there so all these factors come again they will have a constraint review there okay they will come up with one more number say okay we will manufacture 400 then comes the finance the reconciliation review this team will decide whether the company be able to give the budget to the this cycle to manufacture all the products if there are new products can we allocate that all these steps will be considered in the reconciliation review finally it's the management okay who will decide whether this particular values that has been entered this demand should we put all to the production or should we stop what are our long-term strategic goals is our current uh, process data is matching that or what should we do do we need to make some changes the accept or the reject part lies there they will even check on the launch of the new products also all these steps will be taken care in the management team so this is basically sales and operations plan now this is how does it look like okay so we have some uh, IVP for sales and operations we have IVP for demand IVP for inventory IVP for response and supply and it So you can see that as I mentioned, we are talking about sales and operations planning only. How integrated business planning and sales and operations planning are related. So as I mentioned, initially integrated business planning started with only one module, which is IVP for sales and operation. Then the other modules merged. Okay, IVP for demand, inventory, response and supply, and supply chain control. So everything, each and every module has its own license, which you have to buy from SAP. So the basic one is the IVP for sales and operations is that. So if you buy this, the sales and operations has demand and supply also. So you'll get some functionalities of demand and some functionalities of supply, not all. Okay. Some which is, which might be beneficial to your organization or it might not. So when you buy sales and operations license, you'll get some functionalities. Say you can have the forecasting algorithm, some, some of them you can have, but you might not have demand sensing. Demand sensing is basically the short term focus. Say it's in the week level. Next week, what is going to happen? All those algorithms, if you want it to full fledged demand planning, then you have to opt for demand license also along with sales and operation. Similarly, from the supply side also, some basic supply planning heuristics, all those will be there in the sales and operations license itself. But if you want a full fledged supply planning, you have to opt for response and supply planning. It will have the allocation planning and order rescheduling then finite and infinite supply plan all those things will be there so these two models will be serving as the two sides of the sales and operations which has to be balanced then other than that we have IV for inventory how the inventory optimization can be done how the inventory can be managed so that it's not a loss for the company and also the client demand is met okay then other than this is supply chain control tower every values has a threshold okay say we are supposed to have this much demand and what is the stock here if the stock falls below the given limit then there should be a 
notification being sent to the supply chain control tower just like the control tower it monitors everything and alerts the user in case of any discrepancy or any emergency issues are there where the user need to take the action okay so this is a brief on all the model and all these things are sitting on sap hana platform in the cloud where you have a excel ui as well as the web ui web ui is for configuring the settings for the integrated business planning and web ui excel ui is for uh, loading the data and checking the data and all okay so other than this one more input is the cpids which is the cloud platform integration for data service which will connect the sap integrated business planning system with the other systems like the ecc or apo or other so okay so this is the brief on this uh, particular topic i hope uh, it will be beneficial for you thank you